I had a decision that I could make today. I could either get blackout drunk and come on here and just just bloviate about things I know nothing about, or we could go deeper into your mind, and I want to choose the latter. We're going to go down into your mind. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop chatting for a minute if you're on the live chat. Stop. Hold, just save your, your hellos and all of that stuff. Just hang tight. I want you to listen to me for about five minutes. And I want to ask you a question. I want to start with a question. Why do you think... In your mind, why do you think that subverting the dominant paradigm is so important to the progressive woke? We've talked about the subverting the dominant paradigm numerous times. I don't want to assume anything. So a paradigm, if you don't know, it's a network of theories and thought patterns through which you see the world. All right? It's how you see the world. Now, occasionally, we all need to have a paradigm shift. Once upon a time, society saw smoking cigarettes as an, as an acceptable and even favorable social practice. That was a paradigm. That's the way we saw the world. But medical findings subverted the dominant paradigm, and there was a shift. That was a good thing, right? Well, dominant paradigms are shaped both by the community's cultural background and by the context of the historical moment. So why does the world of the woke fight so hard to shift every viewpoint or paradigm that is widely held and acceptable? Based on their rhetoric, their logic, and their actions, one would have to assume that if it's a widely held belief, that it must inherently be evil. It's got to be changed. Now, we collectively have an innate sense of morality that we share as humans. By and large, we all know that certain things are right and certain things are wrong. And if you buck against that moral sense, both by nature as a rebellious spirit or by nurture within a recursive and self-devouring sphere of influence, whether it's your family or your friends, an echo chamber, to put it simply, your unstated goal in life must necessarily become to not only not do what the moral institutions suggest you do, but in fact to tear them down as evil. Now, in short, I think it's about being able to feel better about yourself when something deep inside of you is telling you otherwise. And you know that what you're doing and saying has a level of wrongness about it, but you need to tear down anything that reminds you of that. Now, the right is not immune to this phenomenon, those of us in the conservative circles, but we have the advantage of conservatism, which is literally wanting to slow down the pace of societal change on our side. So the left tends to migrate more towards this subverting the dominant paradigm faster. So I want you to imagine, I'm going to get deep with you for a second, try to, I want you to imagine that every mind, your mind, my mind, is bisected into two levels. Now, this is a gross oversimplification of how the mind works, but it's going to serve for our purposes here. Now, the upper level of the mind, or the surface area of the mind, let's say, is concerned with the information we juggle every day. It's, it, that's everything from what we're going to eat to when we need to go to the bathroom, what we're going to watch on TV, breathing, whatever. Now, increasingly in our time, the overlapping interest of politics and morality are a part of that because we've, we've got this slanted 24-hour news cycle and omnipresent social media platforms constantly bombarding our mind. And this is important because politics is derived from morality. They're like Russian nesting dolls, and neither of them particularly belongs in that upper level of thinking. But that's where it lives now. Now, the lower level, that deep level of your mind, that's where we turn perception inward. And we compare the things we see in various areas of conversation to our own inner moral compass. Now, you can have a sense of pragmatism at this lower level, but for most people, it doesn't occupy the whole space. What's there or should be is that moral foundation not just the things that society declares are moral or immoral. Those change a little bit over time. But your own innate sense of morality, it leaks into the upper level, but it originates in the lower. This is the realm of critical thinking, folks. This is what we've lost. It's the place where humans are, who are truly, intellectually, and probably spiritually as well, the most fulfilled, they ask what may be the most important question in the human experience. Am I wrong? Now, you should be asking yourself that question every single day. That is the element for critical thinking. Am I wrong? Now, in a leftist regime of the mind, that lower level seems to be locked off so that only the upper level exists. That's what George Orwell called the orthodoxy of the party. And I would call it the orthodoxy of an entire ideology. It removes the lower level and it subsumes the upper one. Now, do you want to know how you can label the murder of an unborn baby and gender modification of a child as healthcare? That's orthodoxy of the ideology. 
Do you know why men can enslave other men and it doesn't bother their conscience? It's the orthodoxy of the ideology. Do you know why you can hate someone in your heart for the very simple fact that, that, they, ha- that they don't have a paper mask on their face while sitting on an airplane? Why? Because it's the orthodoxy of the ideology. You have locked off your access to the critical thinking space of your mind. And here's where it gets even crazier. Once you've got an entire society that has has had a mass lobotomy performed over and over again, it becomes the new normal. And it's now possible to separate the upper level into two levels. So you feel just like a normal person with that upper and lower level, but meanwhile, your lower level is no longer the level of critical thinking. You're doing it on the surface level. So now what you call critical thinking is an upper level process that's eliminated all of the innate critical tools and left it in the basement of your mind where they can't be accessed anymore. You've shut it off. Your conscience has been seared. Your heart has been hardened. Your mind has grown calloused. You might still have some or much of that innate moral sense that leaked up from the lower level, but the critical thinking skills, they're gone. They're just gone. And because you now have only a weak foundation of innate morality and no critical thinking with which to process it, somebody else has to do that critical thinking for you. Now, in this case, an ephemeral ideology and the word salad of its strongest adherents. So when Joe Biden says he's going to choose a female of color to either be vice president or Supreme Court justice, there should be bells and alarms and howling dogs that just go off in your conscience telling you that that reasoning is wrong. It's terrible thinking. But you've sealed off that critical thinking part of your mind and ideology has taken over. Now, let me flip the script. What happens when somebody criticizes Donald Trump? How often do you immediately rush to his defense without critically thinking before you speak and ask the question, am I wrong? It's the orthodoxy of ideology taking over. And once that becomes the so-called new word of God in your mind, well, you, my friend, have yourself a new religion of narrow-minded thinking. You might, you might even... Call it woke. You might use the phrase red-pilled. Whatever you want to call it. Dogmatic, driven by tribalism, eager to tear down anything that goes against its core tenets. And the Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I want you to think on these things, folks. Am I wrong? Chris and Mark, this has been the driving question of my life recently. And I'm looking at things. I always want to, to judge things. I don't want to just be a, a, a sounding bell or a clanging cymbal. When I do this show or when I get on my platforms or when I'm asked to speak somewhere, I don't want to just use the whistles, the dog whistles, to get people to go, mm-hmm, that's right, that's right. No, I want you to think, folks. I want you to use that deep inner part of your mind and ask that question with everything. Am I wrong or am I doing what the masters have told me. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.